we feel really at home. Me, I don't feel much difference when I'm in Rwanda and when I'm in Kenya. John Baptiste Gasangwa came to Kenya in 1988 to run a Rwandan parastatal that was based in Mombasa. It was a transport, road transport parastatal, uh, which was actually controlling and supervising uh, all goods from Rwanda and to Rwanda through the port of Mombasa. But his job came to an end when war escalated in Rwanda in 1994. By good luck, I was with my immediate family here during that uh, very hard period for Rwanda. He found an alternative means of income. He ventured into transport and clearing business in 1995, an area he understood well. Registering a company then, you had also to have a Kenyan uh, partner to register. And of course, it was challenging. If you are told to get a partner in business and you don't even know which partner to choose. Guess who was Gasangwa's partner? I had to ask my plumber, you. <laughs> a plumber who was working with us, to be the partner. And of course, I gave him shares, which he didn't pay. It was just for, of course, registration. Uh, for registration purposes. He developed, yeah. uh, but he, he also went through another business. He has become a bishop now mm -hmm. in a church. Nowadays, a foreigner does not necessarily need a local partner as a requirement to register a company thanks to the East African community policies. In the uh, transport business, mm. we offer both clearing the goods from the port of Mombasa and transportation of those, those same goods to destinations. So from where Gasangwa sits, what has changed at the port of Mombasa? Is there improvement when it comes to processing? I think the port has improved tremendously. We have really pushed them to the wall as stakeholders. I will tell you that uh, if anybody wants to be honest in the port, uh, we, we have really pushed the port management to improve. How about the time taken on the road? For example, on his main route, Mombasa Kigali. I remember when we started, it was taking, like, I think, like two weeks to transport from the port of Mombasa to Rwanda, for example. Now it's taking only four or five days. But there are certain weaknesses that must be addressed, he says. We have not even been able to implement with our, what our heads of state have agreed upon. That, for example, we weigh only once. For the moment, we are weighing the lorries four times in Kenya alone. While we had said weighing, for example, once in Mariakani should be enough. Meanwhile, on the ground, his staff are busy going through paperwork. Kasangwa's second business is this hotel which is located in Mutrapa, Kilifi County. He built it from scratch after purchasing a piece of land. Acquiring land in Kenya for, uh, as a foreigner is not really a big challenge. The only thing they'll ask you is to know what you are doing in Kenya, whether you have uh, a work permit or you have uh, uh, a resident permit. At the hotel, he has created employment for 25 people all Kenyan except two Rwandans. So we really appreciate him for that, for coming to Kenya and investing in the hotel industry and helping to create uh, job opportunities for, 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 for the locals. Yeah. We shift attention to Gasangwa's other business again. Nikiondoka hapa asubui, napita Nairobi, asilari Nairobi, napita Nairobi na lana mbele mbele huko. So, Havugimana, Evode has been cleared. He's taking off for Kigali. We don't know how long he will take. We will be accompanying him to tell his story of daring abroad. But in today's episode, it was the moment of his boss, Baptiste Gasangwa. So until we meet again next week, bye-bye for now. <laughs>